Back to Ireland contracting nightly sports call. Now it's time for our Western Pennsylvania Honda Dealers Hoops Madness segment. Paul and I are going to talk about our sleepers in our Final Four. And Paul, um, I have West Virginia in my Final Four. You had any any sleepers? Oh. <laughs> I, oh. I'm telling. You, what were you looking at? Oh, oh I just, UMBC. A guy just uh, hit like a 40 footer against them. It's 41-27. Wow. This might be the first 16. The thing about Virginia though is they defend so well. You know there's going to be a stretch of about eight minutes that UMBC won't score. So I, I would not get too excited. But it's yet. still 14. Only if it gets to about to five minutes left and they're still down 14, that that could be a problem. But I think Virginia will be. A, you know, they, they they defend so well. They're just going to go through one of these stretches where we could be watching history though. It would be wonderful. You don't? Do you have UMBC in your Final Four? I don't even know. I don't <laughs> pick that stuff. I don't. You know. Uh, is there a sleeper team you think has a shot? I brought up West Virginia just because I think West Virginia is a Buffalo. team that's hard to defend. <laughs> well, Buffalo. Buffalo too. can score. Um, uh, what are we talking about? Sleeper team like top? I think like a West Virginia. That's a, you know a five, a four. I, I still think that they're a, a sleeper team. Well, that okay. You win a four or five or here, six with okay, a here's national a, title. Here, here's a sleeper team, but again, is it really a sleeper team? Kentucky. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> think, yeah. You know what I'm saying? They're a five, right? I mean. All right. Well, you know, tune in every night for the Island Contracting Nightly Sports Call Tournament for the Western Pennsylvania Honda Dealers Hoops Madness segment. Let's go back out to the phone lines. We're going to go out to Jeff out in Harmerville. How you doing, Jeff? Hey, guys, how are you tonight? Good, thanks for calling. Hey, Rich, about Pitt basketball, how was Connecticut able to land a coach the caliber of Jim Calhoun that took a program that nobody ever knew played basketball, built them into a national power with three national championships? Yeah. Will Pitt ever be able to land anybody like that? And I'm not talking about one trip to the Elite Eight. I'm talking about multiple Final Fours and multiple national championships. What's your take on that? Uh, Jim well, Calhoun's the greatest. Uh, greatest yeah. that ever lived. No, first of all. <laughs> he was hired they, 80 years ago. They got Jim Calhoun. He was an absolute nobody from, like, yeah. Northeastern or something like that. We aren't right, isn't that where he's from, Northeastern? I, I have no idea. And it you. took him a long time to get to the Final Four, by the way. And, oh, by the way, he cheated at least three different times and was caught and put them on probation. But a big part of it, too, is Connecticut decided, knew they were a basketball school. And they decided they wanted to be really good in basketball and dumped a bunch of money into the program. And it's not, there's no secret to it. If you remember, they called it the Jim Calhoun role when he was funneling money to AAU programs through those in exhibition games with like, you remember they used to play athletes in action yeah. and marathon oil and those kind of teams. Notice they don't play those teams anymore. It's against the rules. Do you know why? Because Jim Calhoun was funneling money to AAU programs to get the players that he got up there. So, yeah, that's how he did it. Alex Stern just tweeted me. He said his first call would be Calipari. Yeah, that would be my first call, too. I don't think you could pay the guy. But, you know, they had an opportunity to get him back in what? Oh, yeah, before oh he something. went to Memphis. Yeah. All right, well, we got to take a break. Back to wrap things up coming up next. Stay right there.